It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on KGFRocks.com. KGFrocks.com, and welcome to another fine edition of the Conjugal Visit this evening. Ha 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 ha, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us this evening. With me is my friend, Mr. Guido. How are yes. you, sir? How are you, sir? I'm good, but I just want to take a moment to say... Uh, well, first, I can hear myself through your speakers. But anyways, I want to say that uh, it's impossible. Memorial Day is uh, definitely a time to give uh, honor to those who have fallen. And I think people forgot about what Memorial Day is all about. And one of our KGF rock, rock stars, Sean Huginan, did post it, something that I uh, – find really good he he was a veteran himself but he said that he he didn't want to see people posting them as themselves as veterans because it's not that day you know right right and uh we should post something like you know and i want want to find a picture of like my grandfather because he was a world war ii veteran but he didn't die in war but i i really don't know anybody that died in war right i know i know people that went to war and uh fortunately everybody that i i know that went to a war came home alive right right and, and the same thing the same thing in in my family i i really had no one die in combat uh i i've had i had brothers that were 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 in combat and right. they lost friends uh i had a um one of my kids go off and and do his thing sure. and th- thankfully was unscathed and right. I, along with you know along with countless other hell my uncle uh, was a Marine, and he landed on Tarawa, and then he also landed on Iwo Jima and survived them both. What the hell is Tarawa? Tarawa is an island in the Marianas that ah. we that we uh, invaded and took. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it didn't get the recognition uh, that uh, Iwo Jima got. And, right. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tarawa was, was another battle, and it was uh, part of the, the Marianas Islands, I think. If I'm wrong, folks, you can correct me on that, <laughs> but what, what I pretty, you, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what do you think? I know we don't like to get political, but mm-hmm. for a moment, I am going to because I'm kind of um, – I don't know how I feel on this one. The president of the United States apologized to Japan for hero. Well, no, she, he, he didn't come right out and apologize. Okay. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, he didn't come right out and apologize, um, but he did show empathy towards the victims and those and and it wasn't the americans fault it was the japanese fault the war was over Mm -hmm. they just needed someone to something to push them over the edge and um god forbid if we'd had to invade the mainland right well i mean we're talking millions of casualties if he showed empathy for it that's fine whatever but Mm -hmm. i want to know who in japan showed empathy for Attack on Pearl oh, Harbor. And they they don't they don't you know right, and right. and the atrocities of World War II and and before World War II were not just committed by the Germans. Oh no! And you know what people don't get and people don't understand yeah. is we just got done defeating the Germans, mm-hmm. and they attacked Pearl Harbor. Well, so yeah, we went from one war to the other. Well, no, we hadn't. We well, hadn't. Uh, we we we. No, factually, what what happened was Germany didn't declare war on us until after we were attacked by the Japanese. Right. Okay. So they Hitler said, "Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and go with our allies," and they declared war on the United States. The problem with dropping the bomb and back to the subject of dropping the bomb, uh, you got damn right we did the right friggin' thing. 
Um, they were told and they were told and we warned them what was coming. We actually told them, dude, look, what we got here and the world knew it at this point. Mm -hmm. Even the Russians knew it. The Russians said, oh my God, you got this? What? What the hell is that? So and what we what we used it for, I, I, I think after the first one, we should have sent out a warning. Say, right. look, I got two more of these fuckers. You know? Well, yeah. <laughs> no warning. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It was done. It, it's nothing that we can change. But nobody shows empathy or sorrow for anything that they did against the United States. Or so, anybody else. The or Mongolians anybody else. So, or the Chinese so, or anybody right. else. Right. They so don't I show don't it. feel that we should, a leader of our country, should do that. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, 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 you know, he didn't apologize. He, he showed, you know, he, he showed humility. Uh, he, he feels in his heart of hearts, uh, and this is Obama. I'm not defending Obama because I'm no big fan. Uh, it, but he, he's got the mindset that peace through love wins over. Okay, we believe it's, that peace. Is gained through strength. You know, and, and I, I say much, that. I, you know, I much, I much, I, I'd much rather be stronger. You know, I say to that peace through <laughs> love, <laughs> because nobody else got, has it. No, Putin nobody ain't, else Putin does it. Say, Putin ain't saying, "Oh, America, <laughs> let me hug you." No, right, he's right. calling us pussies and sissies and fucking weak. No, they're calling yeah. us infidels and right. they're calling us, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever else. And I really don't give a rat's ass. Okay, I you know I don't care about any of that stuff. We are laughed I'm, I'm, on by other countries. I don't care. I don't there. care. I don't care. I don't, you know, especially with this guy. You know, but it, you should it, care though, because oh, well, well, you know what? I do care. I do care that they 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 do the things that they do. Okay, um, but but at the, the same time, if you know, it's like a spoiled fucking child. It's like a, spo a spoiled child. You tell the kid, don't touch the ashtray on the table. What's the first thing he's going to do? He's going to touch the ashtray on the table. We well, shouldn't have an ashtray around with a kid. Well, you know, I'm just using that as a <laughs> metaphor. You tell these guys, oh, don't attack us. Don't attack us. What are they going to do? They attack us. No, no, we should be like the 80s when Reagan was president. I dare you to fucking attack us. I dare you. Yeah, yeah nobody's got ball. But I don't want to get politics, man. I'm done. It, I'm not don't, politics. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. There's nothing politics. I don't. We're not, we're not talking about who's running, who's voting. I'm talking about being a country. It doesn't matter if you're America, fucking Russia, or whatever. You should not say sorry for things you did in the past, because nobody else is going to do it. And you should have balls. We once were. The well, actually, the, the, the Germans did. The Germans did apologize. Well, they should have. I mean, yeah. okay, they should have. I you mean, know. if anything was the worst atrocity in war ever, was World War II. World War II was, was disgusting. It was a horrible, freaking battle war. It wasn't, Vietnam was bad too, and the Gulf Wars were mostly, you know, people don't realize the Gulf War, there was ground soldiers, but not do, like World War II. Yeah, do, do you believe that FDR, before we got in the war, do you believe that FDR knew what was going on in Germany? Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. They, Dude, we have right now. We know where what everything is happening in every part of this country. There's spies in every country. There's spies from every country in every country. Yeah. It you know there is. You know your neighbor who lives next door to you who might be from the Ukraine. He may could be. You, you never know, man. You know. I mean, <laughs> especially in America, it would be hard for us to tell foreign spies because we have everybody here is foreign. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Well, I stick. Uh, you know, up. I just all I want to do is rock and roll, man. That's, all I <laughs> That's wanna not this do. kind of show. Uh, yeah. I, I told you, I'm, I'm fired up about this. I'm really pissed about it. So. Uh, you, I, I, well, yeah. I mean, I'm not pissed about it. The guy's almost done, man. He's got less than a year left in office. <sighs> just let him ride it out. Fuck it. He's lame duck. Nah, he can't do anything else to hurt us. I don't know. He's still got time. You know, we still, you know, it, it, no, I, everybody freaking out about, oh, he's going to take our rights away and blah, blah, blah. Okay, 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 okay. We're going to keep leaning to the left. And if we keep leaning to the left, that's what's going to happen. But that's not the point. The point is, is am I going to be able to still play rock and roll on KGFrocks.com? You might that's not one day. 
Well, I mean, well, I'll tell you what. They're going to price it out of our price range is what they're going to do. They're going to take it away with money. But you know what? Another thing that may be the downfall of this kind of radio is that we play songs with cuss words in it, and we may offend somebody. Well, fuck them. I don't care. (laughs) But that's the way the world's (laughs) going now is we're not allowed to offend anybody. No, we're not allowed to offend anyone. Well, yeah. with that, with that being said, with that being said, I, I'm going to go ahead and bring MJ in. All right. And is Chaz around? Uh, do we see Chaz? Yeah, he's here. Is he? Is he there? He's not in here, but he's here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to bring our, our our two friends in to join us for the show, and we're going to have a panel here this evening. Uh, we'll, we'll ask them what they think. You never know. Okay. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Are they coming yeah, in or what? Yeah, they're coming in. Hang on, I gotta find your. Uh, I gotta find Chaz. Where, where the hell is he? Okay, we'll bring her in. Here's MJ, my friend MJ. She's so cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, she is. But you yeah. know, you should bring her in quietly or secretly, and, and then she's just there. She's I magic. am here. And you I am hear here. everything you guys are saying. You guys Good. are so talking shit. <laughs> I'm so talking shit, huh? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm I, both of you guys. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of people thinking we're a bunch of pushover sissies. Nuh-uh. Who we're says not, though. pushover sissies? Russia. We're not, Russia thinks though. we're the fucking <laughs> sissy. It's oh, on no. Earth. No, they're well, they're afraid of us too. I mean, who's going to invade the United States? There's a gun leader, behind there. There's a gun behind them. every fucking door, man. Not not if fucking Hillary gets in there, you ain't going to have no gun behind. Oh every door. come on! They said that about Obama. Oh, okay, they said that about Obama. They're always yeah, saying they, that. Yeah, they're always they, they use that fuck fear with our shit, gun laws. It's our First Amendment they, right. They're, they're not going to take it away. They fucking know. But the only way they're going to be able to take away your rights to own a gun is to is to just call. Just it'd be a civil war. Well, here's here's they the know that between, they're not here's stupid. The difference between Russia's leader and America's leader. Russia's leader is riding shirtless on fucking bears. Our leader is having fucking marines hold uh, umbrellas over his head. Well, if we have to compare leaders, I'm gonna have to agree. Obama's a pussy. Definitely. You know, <laughs> yeah. to, oh, no, I, I agree mean, with you. I'm not disagreeing Putin, right? with you that yes. he's a pussy. Yeah, Putin. I, I'm scared of Putin, but mm-hmm. I think I'm more scared of the guy Obama. that no North Korea. North Korea. Yes, that yeah. motherfucker. Now that guy is one to fear. <laughs> Kim Jong Dong or something. That yeah, or something. <laughs> that motherfucker. That guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a he's a psycho individual, and he's a you know who one of his best friends is? Who? Dennis Rodman. Dennis, really? Oh yeah, they're buddies. Yeah, oh, that's went, right. They Den, get Dennis Robin. Yeah, he went over there to visit him. He went over I there think to Chaz see him. Chaz is here. I, I, Chaz is here. Hey, Chaz, what's going on, dude? What's going on, people? How are you, man? Hi. Doing I mean, good. How's everybody else? We're doing just great, man. We're doing great. We've been looking forward to tonight's show. It's a big show tonight. Um, Mike, uh, uh, Michael Blackie Starks is with us. He's the, uh, the guitarist and singer for the band Maximus, and he's got a couple of new projects coming up, and we're going to talk about those projects and stuff. So, and uh, by the way, I just wanted to say uh, real quick before we continue the conversation, uh, this show is brought to you by <laughs> uh, Voodoo Queen Magazine. And Voodoo Queen Magazine does interviews with, with a lot of female artists that are out there. And they are also responsible for bringing us some of our guests, such yes, as Michael Starks. So we're very, 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 very thankful to Yvonne. Thank you, Yvonne. We appreciate everything that you do for KTF give, Rock. Give her, give her a round of applause. Yeah, give her a Woo! round of applause. Yeah, way to go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We got to yeah. do that. Yay. Yeah, okay, Yvonne. I, I love how you did your... your uh, evil laugh because you lost track of you. What laugh? Yeah, Queen Management, you know. <laughs> yeah, Voodoo Queen. <laughs> Voodoo Queen Management. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's another one. You know, have a toke for, you know, the Pope. Yeah. It, you have know, the Pope should the t- get stoned. That would be funny. I, how do we know they stoned. didn't? How do, know, how do we know we haven't had a Pope? Be like, be on this the po- Pope uh, seems very down to earth and kind of cool, so yeah. maybe he does. Yeah, he'll be, could be. He'll be on the stage. Jesus Christ, I'm tripping balls. 
Chip, you could be. Could be. God damn it, that was some good shit. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to make it my goal tonight to offend as many people as I can. You know, you know you know what my that favorite should be very easy. Oh, I know. Do you know what do you know what my favorite is is when Donald Trump makes fun of Rosie O'Donnell. It's fucking hilarious. I think it's funny too. It's so funny. I, I, I love on the I love on the one you know debate when the girl said you you will make fun of women call them fat he goes no only Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, uh. I'm like that, that, he makes me laugh. He's an idiot. <laughs> but, but you better be he ready. Tried, he, tried to say, he tried to say California is, is not in drought and that our drought problem is caused by some kind of fishes. Like, what the fuck does he know about climate change yeah, and about but, the drought where I live? Yeah, uh, uh, um, blow sucker fish. Yeah, he's tripping. Yeah, he, I, the whole, I don't like either one of them, to be we honest. We are in drought yeah. because we have a climate change and everything just got fucked up. No, it's because you guys smoke too much weed and you're fucking yeah. cold. And, and you're pulling all the water to feed your plants, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> and when they have cotton mouth in the morning. Yeah, they, they drink all mouth. the water in the morning because they got cotton mouth so bad they no, can't okay. stand it. You watch next, Denver's going to be drought. Yeah. I don't care. I'd rather live in the drought of California. Than the fucking nasty water of Michigan. Yeah, yeah, they they, yeah. they were killing people were dying because of their water. Yeah, no, that's poison. Is that the oh wait? Is that the place where the water was coming out yellow? You know, you know yeah. speaking yeah, of foreign gross. countries. Now, speaking of foreign countries, had that happened, like what happened in Detroit, if mm. that happened in North Korea, that fucking governor would have been dead. He would have to kill himself. Oh yeah, they, oh yeah. No, he, he no. They had put him against the wall and they'd have shot him. They'd have yeah. killed him. I mean, but they don't know, fuck around over there, man. Did you ever see that movie, The Interview? I think isn't that what it's called? Yeah. 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 I yeah. love that movie when he had to stick the fucking probe uh, or whatever, <laughs> up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that movie was so. <laughs> <laughs> the studios were so afraid of that movie. Yeah, so they did. Snarkied. And then, and then we, and then the producers and shit even went so far as to cancel the premiere. And they gave the movie away. You know, I think that was really retarded. I think that, see, and that's why America's a, in that aspect, they shouldn't have backed down. No. Nope. Like, really, they pulled the movie out of theaters because the guy from Korea threatened. You know, oh you know, yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't. They weren't afraid of like terrorist attacks. They were afraid of all the hacking that Korea did and all the information they knew. And they were afraid they were going to leak and everybody was going to find out who's in whose pockets. Yeah, it was exactly. It was still right. crap, though. Right. You yeah. know what we need to do is we need to get Larry the Cable Guy to run for president because we need a redneck in there. Man. I'd yeah. vote for him. You, know, you vote for Larry the Cable Guy. He'd yeah. be better than Trump. We're going to take Sundays off and have a cookout, you know. Yeah. Well, Honestly, we're not. We're not. Neither one of these two are going to get into the White House. Neither I, Hillary. It's going to Chong for president. Yeah, Bernie Bernie oh. Sanders is going to is going to divide. He's that mathematically ticket. out. Yeah. And well, Bernie we'll Sanders see about that. Idiot. We'll see about that because How can uh, he get in? well, Hillary's going to get indicted. You right. know what? Have you ever thought Obama can't stand that bitch? You know what, though? Have you ever thought this is all just like a conspiracy? Them throwing Trump in the mix? Trump has been talking about running for president since 1980. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been talking. Like, isn't it yeah. kind of weird, though? He has no political background. Like he, That's what they like been, about him, though. Right, AJ, that's what they there. like about him. Never, Do you know never, who else didn't have political background? I know. You told me. Who was it? Uh, Nixon or something. No. Wanna, who George, was it? George Washington. The George Washington was founded as a general. Of our country had no political well, experience. He was the first president. Okay, so so just because they have political experience, let's get this right. <laughs> you got political experience. That means you can do it. Okay, but as a businessman, you know what he does when he gets into trouble? He files for bankruptcy. So why like, he's just gonna fuck us and file for bankrupt- bankruptcy? No, well, no, see, no, no. no. See, that's what the mis- But that's all he's done and with his here's, business. Here's, here's the misconception. Here's the he can file for bankruptcy because he has jobs, unlike Bernie Sanders, who lived off of welfare until he exactly. was 70 years old. Yeah, right. let me he's say right. something about that. Let me say something about that. He has had some bankruptcies in his time, and he's had some failings. 
But what is the founding father, one of our founding fathers said a long time ago, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And he's continued to try, and some of the shit that he touched turned to shit. Some of the stuff he touched (laughs) turned to gold. And well, that's what's important. What turned to gold? I mean, think about this. He has, now think about this for a second. Talk about good management skills. This guy has run for president through the primaries against 13 different people, okay, and has spent has spent $70 million to do that. But mm-hmm. all 13 of those people combined have spent $480 million against him. To okay, beat him down. You talk about smart, man. He's got 70 people on his staff. You know how many Hillary okay. Clinton has? 2,600. Okay, but do you think that <clears throat> building a wall to keep out foreigners yes. Yes. is yes. a good idea? Yes. Really? Yes. You know that people can climb walls, right? And they can yeah, they climb walls. Wall. But, but, but listen to this. Listen to this, okay? Check it he out. wants to do exactly what Mexico did on the other side of Mexico. So why is it a problem for Mexico? Mexico built a wall between Venezuela. Because it's a waste of fucking money. It's not a waste. He wants Mexico to pay for it. Because we live... Yeah, good luck with that. They have no money. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of money. What's a waste of money is sending slackers to college for free because they're just going to go because they can. Well, you know what, though? Have you ever been to college? I mean, I knew this was going to happen tonight. Why did I I know? Have you ever had to pay your fucking tuition and it's like being debt? Like, Mm -hmm. I know people. I know people have been going to college all their life and they've never spent a dime. Well, what you do, Mary Jane, is you regulate the collegiate industry. You regulate it. You tell them this is what you can charge. This is the parameters. Yeah. But they don't. They overcharge everybody. And then kids have to pay out of pocket. Instead of giving it away for free, change the system. Change the system. Honestly, I wish education could be free because if education was free, there'd be more educated people out there. Well, tell me me this, MJ. I know about my area. What about your, MJ? What about your area? How are your public schools doing, your public high schools? Are they all in good shape? Because ours are in terrible shape and they're free. Yeah, I think it free. really depends where you live. If you live in a shitty area, right? But like see, here is the thing: you're in Oakland, it, you're now, isn't everyone Oakland. entitled to not just a shitty education? Right, right, but no. Here's here's the thing: the collegiate industry is run just like the medical industry. Okay, the best teachers are going to go where they get paid the most, and the best students are going to go to the place where they can learn the best. Okay, but now you're opening up to everybody, saying that anybody can go to college anywhere. A fucking B student shouldn't have the right to go to, or not B, maybe a C student shouldn't have the right to go to fucking like one of the Ivy League schools. Oh, they don't. You, in order to get in an Ivy League school, right. an Ivy League school like Harvard, as an example, you need the grades for that. Right, right. but but you need to be the, able to make it in and prove you that you are. But don't you think they're just going to take anybody because they're going to get the money anyways? No, they can't do. They won't do that. They don't. Why they not? Have, because why not? If it's free for everybody, anybody can come here. The government's going to pay for it, regardless if you fail or pass. There you go. Problem solved. I'll take anybody that wants to come here now because I'm going to make millions of dollars. Okay, that is, they probably would do it because they do it with kids that are on drugs, like mm-hmm. these little in. Like, you know that each school gets paid thousands of dollars for each kid that they have on Ritalin. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that is possible, but... That's where I'm. That's where I go back. What is so wrong with educating people? Well, the, the reason why this world is so fucked the, up. The, the problem is because doesn't start. Some aren't educated. Well, the problem doesn't start with the colleges. The problem starts with our high schools, and the cuts and the budget cuts and the cuts and the cuts and the cuts. You know, they never had these problems with the budgets in the school districts in this country when the states and the local governments took care of their own schools. Right. But and you they know never what, you had know, these problems with the unions. Right. Now, the problem we have is you can't fire a fucking teacher, no matter what. Even if even if 40% of her class is, is at a C minus or below. So right. you can't fire that teacher. The problem is, the problem is, is our kids need to get a better start in life before they go to college. You want a free college education? Earn it. Get a scholarship and go to fucking well, school. That's how it, it should be. Well, no, here, here's how it should be. Kids should all get a chance to be educated. You're right. Some yeah. people can't afford it. 
whatever. So this is what you do. Don't don't let – here's the choice. There is going to be public colleges now that are free for yeah. the kids that can't afford it. Now the kids – you know, if you really want to do that and you want to take on the loan, you want to go to a better school, now that's up to you. That's on you. We were going to give it to you for free, but you wanted to pay for it. Well, you can get a better education well, when you pay for Well, that's what I mean. It. If there's a kid out there that comes from a family that isn't well off, that doesn't have money, you know, I'm talking about a teenage teenage guy or girl who had to work their way through college, uh, I, bought I, their own, they bought their own car because they worked hard after school and they kept their grades up. Yeah, but I'm saying the good. rich kid's going to get it for free too now if Bernie Sanders gets in there. The rich kid will get it for free too. Well, so everybody will get it for free. So now, now Donald oh, Trump said, "Why can't Trump's education free. be free? Why, why can't education be free though?" Where, it's tell me why, because it's a higher education. The education is free up into twelfth grade. If you want to go on to higher education, children? I have four children. Don't you want your children to be able to become educated and become as smart and reliable? Of on course the I do. You're not here anymore, and and knowing that they'll be okay. Does, because does free they college? Are? Does free? Let me ask this one question, and then we're done with this subject, okay? <laughs> I'm going to ask one question, and we're done with this fucking subject, okay? Does free college make a person more responsible? No, because you know what? what so you be Does it make them less want dependent? To go to college. That it's I not an to entitlement college. to go to school. So now we're going to live in a completely, a completely entitled society. Now, does, does that reading that? Does that and see? Because when I reached my age for Social Security, I earned that fucking money. That was mm-hmm. my money. I worked all my life to get that fucking money. So that money now is going to get diverted because they've already they've already just torn Social Security. You guys will never see it. You guys will never see Social Security. I guarantee you. I will because I'm right on the cusp. But they've already destroyed the Social Security. And you're still paying into it, by the way. You're never going to see it, but you're still paying into it. Now, I earned that entitlement. That's not an entitlement. That's something that I earned. So what we're saying is, is right off the bat, an adult gets out of high school and he goes to college and it's paid for. He's entitled to that education. Does that raise him? To, does that bring him into the world as a responsible human being? I don't. I don't know about that. And I. But what I do know is, I don't think they could fully make that free because, I, I, then if, no, no way. because if that was the case how the fuck would they be able to pay they the need teachers to control the cost and of education. the administration and everybody that runs the school they would obviously have to charge some money but bringing school fees down is not a bad idea because college students are paying so much we, money we like need they're in their 30s still paying off their college loans from when they were in their 20s we that's need crazy to, we need doctors choice we need it doctors, was choice, but that's fucked up. <laughs> Lawyers, doctors, judges. We need smart people. We need people who can do this stuff. But they're set in life to do that, and they they're responsible people. They're paying their bills. They're paying. Uh, they're paying for their. Here's college. another. Here's another angle. For you know what it is? You're talking to a, the wrong person because I'm the type of girl that if I ran for president, I would want everybody to be edu- free education for everyone. I'd be like Bernie, I guess. And I'd want free medical care for everyone. Anybody who's sick, who needs a doctor, gets treated. I, and I wish everybody could have a home. You know They're, what? I'm just a goddamn hippie. And no, I want you're just a Canadian. I, well, yeah. You know what? Yes. That's the point. You know where I want to live? Finland. Yeah. Those people have a great government, and they make sure everybody has medical care, everybody has education. They do it all, and it's They're amazing. Broke. No. They're broke. <laughs> I'm just, you know, if money didn't I know, make sense, I know. It, this would I know. be a different conversation. I just, you know what it is? I'm a loving person, and I would love and, to see everybody. But we're not, happy. we're not, I, you know what I love? I love that all three of my kids are responsible human beings, and they're all paying for their college. And how did they get there? Because of their education, their teachers, and people pushing them to do that. No, no. They did it because they wanted to better themselves. Oh, not too. And they want something more for themselves that they didn't get from me. They wanted something more for themselves for their future. And that's where it lies. That's where it is. Because what about all these guys that didn't get free college? Now all of a sudden, oh, fuck, I guess I was born too fucking early. 
You know what, though? In a sense, people do get free college, though, because you got grants. People don't have to pay grants. I'm back. telling you, you can earn that stuff. You can yeah. earn grants. You can uh, earn, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, you get a um, uh, scholarship. scholarship. You get scholarships. You can earn that, but you got to do something exceptional. Now, when it comes to the arts, like music, we're losing I, that in our high yeah, schools. You want to fight for something. You want to fight for something that should be free. That should be music classes uh, and, here's and another art thing classes that I, I would and everything else that's being I cut out. Here's another thing I would do. You want to know a class they can get rid of, guys? You want to know a class they can get rid of right now? Fucking study hall. Get rid of that fucking study hall. You'd save millions of dollars across the fucking oh, board. Oh, no, dude, that's where I did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, you are right there, though. Like, don't tell him he's right. Yeah, well, I am right. They're getting rid of it. I mean, even no, here, I have a problem with that. Don't cut out music. Don't cut out arts. Well, they cut the that, fucking food program, so they should have some. And that's bullshit too, because uh, you know, again, I mean, you're some kids say, only get one meal a day, and that's and at that's school. That's something. And and some people are like, well, it's not our responsibility. Well, you know what? That's bullshit. Fucked up. It is too. It is too your responsibility. Make There's sure these kids out are there fed. That I'm mom for, is working three jobs trying to put food <laughs> on the table, but barely has enough money to pay the rent. And no, she doesn't have food to feed her kid three times a day. So that extra meal that they get at school is important. Can't okay. cut that. Okay. You know what you 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 are definitely a flower child. I am. I I I I just yeah. wish we lived in a world where everybody was happy and we could help each other. The, God yeah. bless America. God yeah, bless America. Well, listen, yeah. I, we got to get off this topic. We got to get because I got we got to we we got we got to we got to. We got to get off this because we we got to we got a guest and we're, we've gone into this thing now. It's eight thirty, so no, or nine thirty rather, Eastern Standard Time. I you know, love KGF Rocks. We just we just ate that alive, man, and we didn't hear a word out of Chaz. So Chaz, you talk. You, have you looked into Lenny Kravitz? Lenny Kravitz, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, on KGFRocks.com is our artist of the week. And Lenny Woo-hoo! Travis has got got some great music and stuff. So what what do you got going on, man? What's up? He he, he didn't go to college either. Uh, I did, not Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. Oh no, Lenny Kravitz <laughs> uh, did not. Go to college. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz is cool. I've always liked Lenny Kravitz. Uh, he you know he's you know kind of like uh, Guido's idol there, Prince. He does a lot of different styles of music, and uh, you know some of his stuff is more soul, some of it's more funk, but. I really like when Lenny Kravitz, you know, just strips it down and uh, does some rock and roll. And uh, so I decided to, like, talk about my favorite song from him from my favorite album. It's his, uh, I think it's 2000, I don't know, four or five. It's called Baptism, Red Cover. It's a great mm-hmm. album. And uh, my favorite song on that one is uh, Where Are We Running? And okay. I think it's got a great riff. It's got a great beat. And I think... Lenny Kravitz's voice that is best in that song, and I think everybody should definitely give that one a listen. Oh, cool. Well, why don't we play a snippet of that? You want to do that? Great. Sounds why don't great. you play a snippet of that? I'm going to play a snippet of that, okay? How's that sound? Does that sound good to you? Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds good Woo! to me, too, if I can find the friggin' thing. I yeah. said it to you. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I just got to grasp it. Uh, it's, that big bu- <laughs> it's that big button. Oh. Oh no! What have I done? Guido, why don't you tell them about uh, Lenny Kravitz's parents? Lenny Kravitz's parents are uh, famous uh, people. They're, well, one is famous, and it's uh, they were uh, an, you know a, not a, a weird occurrence or an unusual occurrence, or not unusual, but something that didn't happen very often back in that time. They were a multiracial family, um, and his father was a white. Jewish guy and his mother was a African American woman who played on the Jefferson or not the Jeffersons was it the, yeah, the Jeffersons as a, a multiracial couple. Matter of fact, when she went for the the the, um, the interview, uh, the audition, they like I don't can you handle this? Could you handle being married to a white guy on TV? And she she opened up her wallet and said, "This is my husband." They said, "You got the job." Yeah. So that's Roxy Roker of the Jeffersons was his his. Uh, Mom and his dad did like uh, I think it was either art for um, album covers and stuff. And his best friends growing up, get this, and I'm not even bullshitting you. They all used to play football together. Flea and and uh, Slash and Lenny Kravitz. All right. Well, we're gonna play a snippet of that song, okay? And this is where are we running? 
KGFRocks.com. This is Lenny Kravitz. Uh, you can catch that. <laughs> you can catch that on KGFrocks.com. What are y'all laughing about? <laughs> we were making fun of you because we knew you couldn't hear us. Oh well, that's always fun. They couldn't hear you either, so yeah, yeah take that and stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Are so, we back on the air? Yeah, we're back on the air. Hi, what do you think about that song, Free Ride? Yeah, well, I thought it was okay. I, I, uh, it's Lenny Kravitz. Uh, never was a huge fan of Lenny Kravitz. I like him. I mean, he's pretty good, but uh, some of his stuff kind of sounds the same. You never really a... listened to him, did you? Yeah, I did. Yes. If you take his favorite album is that. My favorite album is Lenny Kravitz's third album, Are You Gonna Go My Way. If you take Are You Gonna Go My Way and listen to it from beginning to end, you will like Lenny Kravitz. I like it ain't over till it's over. Yep, that's that's a good song too. And uh, my favorite song by Lenny Kravitz is "Believe" off of "Are You Gonna Go My oh, Way." I thought it was "American Woman." No, no, I actually hate that song oh, I I hate because it. they I over fucking stay. played that song. They and it's like, oh, Lenny Kravitz, "American Woman." He has other songs. Play that. And you're and, then, and you're a huge uh, Burton Cummins fan. So. And I'm a huge Burton Cummins fan. So yeah, for Lenny Kravitz to do Burton Cummins. It's hard. Burton Cummins to me is one of those guys that nobody can really do. You know what I mean? And right. it, like like Prince, people do Prince's songs, but they always do it differently, and, and and I like it. You know, but like with Burton Cummins, it's the voice, and and the guess who? It's the voice, and right. that I like, and I think that's what it is. And he did a good version of it. I'm not going to say he didn't, but it just got overplayed. Just like uh, right. the other song what was it Fly Away. Yeah, just yeah. Like, yeah. saturated the market, and uh, then the other song again. It was like those three songs it was all Lenny Kravitz did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, as that's far true. as the radio was concerned, at least. Yeah, right. it, it's not cool, but yeah, he is our artist of the week, and I and I enjoy him, and uh, I think we're probably one of the only stations that would give Lenny Kravitz an artist of the week, and that's he true. should be. That's, you know? that's true. He should be, and and, and I'll and I'll say one more thing. Uh, uh, we keep adding new music to our library yeah. and uh, to our to our rotation and uh, uh, and our guest tonight. We just added Maximus to our rotation along mm-hmm. with who else? Guido, did we put in there? Oh, well, we got new stuff from Monster Truck, Twenty One Pilots. We got new stuff from Volbeat, Andy Black's new stuff, Danny Warsnop, uh, news for Six A.M. Uh, uh, Corner of Sanctuary, Rock Road Rebels, new stuff. Yeah, you guys are stepping things up from Cly- cost to modern. Rock, yeah, Cl- oh, yeah, Cliver, Ghost, From Ashes to New, Baroness. I mean, we got Pop Evil, Hailstorm, it, Fall, it, Fall of a yeah, Tyrant, goes on. You're welcome. You're welcome for all that. Yeah, right. man, kick ass. Well, that's a big help, man. See, that's what we do far. at KGF Rocks. We help each other. And we're asking all of you out there in listening world to join us. Okay, on kgfrocks.com. Uh, it's a great station, and we take a lot of pride in it. And uh, besides that, it's fucking free. So if you don't take advantage of it, that's on you, man. We, and you know what? I was listening today, and we play, they play uh, Autopilot played um, uh, Megadeth. Mm-hmm. And then right played. after that, right after that, played Metallica. And then yeah. after that, it went right into Cashmere from Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> well, two out of three. Fucking, two out of three ain't bad. I mean, what a great mix! 
What a fucking great mix. It just slid one right into the next, man. It was great. Yeah. It was great. It, it does mix well. And, and even sometimes when it plays the older stuff, too, because we even got stuff from early 66, oh, which yeah. is like, you know, like uh, uh, almost like the Trogs Wild thing. And it fits in with some of the music. It fits oh, yeah, in. it does. It does. Yeah, it does. It fits in. Even some, you know, some Credence or, you know, stuff like that. It fits in. It falls into place. I mean, and then, you, and then of course, you get uh, uh, the other day I was listening and it played a Black, uh, we played a Black Sabbath song. Uh, what was it, Paranoid, and it slid right into Ozzy Osbourne Crazy Train. Now, how cool was that? How mm-hmm. cool was that, man? That was awesome, man, so I dig that. Listen, our t- tonight's, guest, can, tonight's guest is Blackie Starks, and he is a, a lead singer and guitarist from Maximus, and he's got some other great stuff coming your way. But right now, we're going to bring him in right after this song. Uh, oh, 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 I did want to say real quick, uh, MJ, thanks for coming in tonight. Thank you. I had a really good time. and Yeah, we talked politics I just wanna, tonight. Yeah, we did. I yeah. just want to say thank you to all the men and women who serve our country. Thank you for everything that you do. And I keep you all in my prayers and your families. And God bless everyone that has given up their life for my freedom and for our country. And you all are my prayers, too. And just God bless you on this Memorial Day. Thank you, MJ. That was sweet. Thank you so much. You and I love it. you guys, and I hope you guys Aww. keep rocking, and I will see you all next week, and be safe. We love Aww. you too, sweetie pie. Okay, you have a good night, okay? And, okay. And uh, uh, it's 420 somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I'm token right now. <laughs> <laughs> good night, sweetheart. All right, Thanks. good night. Have a good one, you guys. Yeah, you take too. Take care, hon. Bye-bye. And you, you're going to stay with us tonight, aren't you, Chaz? Sure, I got nothing, nowhere to go. You got nowhere to go? Okay. All right. We're gonna, right now, we're going to play Boomstick by Maximus, and then we're going to bring nice. our special guests in. All right. Let's keep rocking. KGFrocks.com. Yeah. All right. Rock and roll, man. That was a great tunage, and uh, we want to welcome into our studio tonight, Blackie. How you doing, man? What's up, my brother? Yeah? What's going on, man? How you been? Uh I'm good, man. Just enjoying the. Uh, I got a little fat today. Just enjoying the holiday weekend, you know. My my, uh, my wife is a, is an amazing cook, and uh, we she's a farm girl. We live out in Kansas, right? And uh, rain or shine, I mean, it was just been raining out here off and on all day. She went out and grilled anyway. She didn't give a damn. Good for her. Good. She she's a keeper. God damn it, she's a oh, keeper. Oh yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> <laughs> Me and Chaz are from New York, and it's been 90 the uh, past two days. It's like uh, everything. We just snowed a couple weeks ago. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, that's brutal on you, man. That's uh, I, 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 Dude, Maximus, Maximus was just up in New York uh, a couple of months ago, and we had we had a couple of gigs up that way. We, we went walking oh, really? around all over Manhattan, dude. i tell you what. Probably it's different. Hard if I just got a cab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can't like New York. See, we live in Buffalo, New York, which is so, oh, four okay. hundred or so miles away from New York City. Yeah. But New York City, you can't really walk around like that, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, there's weirdos in New York City. I'm telling you, it's oh, it's uh, yeah, we, uh, I, we I, actually I, had a buddy. We had a buddy who was actually a, a percussionist for uh, Mark Anthony. He played with J Lo, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, a friend of mine introduced us to him, and um, he was kind of our tour guide for the day. So, oh, cool! So, so get this: I'm in, I'm in Chuck's, walking around, probably I don't know five, good five hours, <laughs> up and down this this part of Manhattan, and that part of Manhattan. And by the time we finally get back to to go play the gig, I'm just I'm dead. Yeah, right. So, right. <laughs> so we we go load in, we go play, and uh, then he decides, hey man, let's go see Times Square. I'll lit up at midnight. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a city that never sleeps, man. Oh, it's true right. too. Yeah, it, 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 now, I, it, now your band. What, what kind of uh, what, what kind of music? I mean, now we just heard uh, Boomstick, but what what do you can label yourself as if you have a label? Um, I would say you know it's just it's modern rock. I mean, it's uh, it's good. It's just good four on the floor radio rock. You know, we're, we mm-hmm. don't try to be anything that. Uh, we're not trying to go out and be any genre that we're not. We're just uh, with whatever comes out. I mean, uh, it, if you had to compare it to anything, um, we would fit nicely on your in your collection with Shine Down, uh, oh, cool. Caesar, Godsmack, those kind of bands. But I mean, you know, we just we just do our own thing. Oh, cool! That, yeah, and that's good. You know, those bands are every band you just said are is very uh, excellent. Uh, I know uh, Chaz just went to see a. Um, 
got or saw God's opened up for Godsmack cover band last night. And they were pretty uh, good, I guess. But they were spot on. That's spot on. But that's the thing you got to do is, is you just got to play music for the love of it. You know, you yep. don't give a shit what, what other people think. I mean, you want people to like you, of course. But if you sell yourself out, then what are you doing it for? Dude, here's a, here's a funny story for you. Speaking of playing music for the love of it. Obviously, you know, nowadays, 2016, music does not pay the bills. So every, mm-hmm. just about everyone you know has a day job. I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. So right. I, I have, I have a, a very flexible day job that allows me to travel wherever I want to, which, which is nice. Uh, my, my boss actually encourages me to go work cities wherever the band's playing so that the oh. band always has a hotel to stay in. So pretty cool. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm in Nauvoo, Illinois last week. And so I walk into this business and, I'm, and I start talking to this girl about, you know, whatever, giving her the sales pitch. And she goes, oh, my uh, my boyfriend tours in a, in a non-for-profit as a huh. bass player. And I looked at her and I said, hon, all bands are non-profit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. That is very yeah. true. Yeah. So, so, so Blackie, <laughs> tell me something, man. Now, growing up with your with your folks and stuff, man, uh, what was your, when you were, you know, say 15, 16, maybe 17, what was your inspiration to, to, uh, to get into music and really dig into it? My family, actually, uh, this is, this is no BS. My family has been, I'd say about 90% of all my family members for like the last 200 years have been some sort of musician, singer, uh, luthier, um, whatever the case may be. Somebody oh, in my cool. family has always been involved in music. My grandfather actually, uh, played a couple of shows John, with Johnny Cash. Uh, oh, got wow. kicked off. Of the, got kicked off of the show because he was drinking with Johnny Cash and Little Jimmy Dickens. The stage manager kicked him off the show out of the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> no way. Um, All so right. My, uh, <laughs> I'd yeah. like to meet your grandfather, man. That would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my my uncle Rick, who is one of my biggest influences playing guitar. Uh, I mean, this guy was actually offered a job with Leonard Skinner when they were reforming. Oh, wow. uh, he played with Albert King. Uh, he was. Uh, he was all around badass blues musician. I mean, he he sat in with a lot of really huge names. Uh, he actually toured with David Allen Coe. Actually, my dad was with him too. Um, cool. When I was a kid, I used to sit around the family get-togethers, and it was always all my uncles and uh, great uncles and aunts would sit around and, and play guitar and, and, and fiddle and and you know just it's like it was like that every weekend at my grandfather's house. So I grew up playing music. And That's awesome. You couldn't help it. My first gig, my first gig as a drummer. Uh, my dad drug me out to a jam session and, uh, Johnny Johnson was, was a friend of theirs. Johnny Johnson used to come into a bar that my parents used to own. Johnny Johnson is the, uh, was the piano player for Chuck Berry that Johnny be good with it about. Mm-hmm. So, so my dad drags me to this jam session. First time I ever met Johnny in person. I'm like 15 years old and they talked me into getting up on the drums and I just, I'm, I've been playing since I was 12, so I was pretty decent at it, but man, I was nervous as crap. So. <laughs> I'm back there all stiff armed and, and Johnny stops in the middle of the song, turns around and looks at me and goes, Boy, what's the matter with you? And I said, Um, I'm fifteen and white and you're Johnny Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You me, me and Chaz, it's like that for us too. In our family, we had uh generations of, of, of sexy motherfuckers, so you know, we know how it is, you know. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, but but no, that's cool. I mean music should be passed on from 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 you know, mentor to mentor. Like me I'm a DJ, Chaz is into music and our dad, you know, he wasn't he was a DJ and he played guitar, but he wasn't like, you know, amazing at it, but he still influenced most us, I, I would say, a little bit to do it, you know. And uh, it, it, there's, I think that's what it is. I think more people are, are influenced. You know, somebody says, who's your influence? Oh, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix. But I think the better musicians are more influenced by somebody closer to them. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It, because it's it, it's more like part of them then. And so so it's, you, uh, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, no, I've, no got a, go ahead. I've got an 18-month-old. <laughs> I've got an 18-month-old at home. Mm-hmm. And he's already shown interest in music. He's uh, got a little uh, toy drum set. I, we, my wife and I, uh, we hand him the, uh, the drumsticks, and he sits down and just starts going to town on it. Never awesome. told him how to do anything. Um, he's got a little piano. He sits down. He puts, pulls his little bench up, and he starts playing the piano. Sometimes he climbs on top of it like Jerry Lee Lewis, which is really yeah. funny. Um, he's, <laughs> he's got a little guitar, you know, and he'll he'll sit down and, and just start wailing away on the guitar, you know, just kind of banging on it. For, for what an 18 month old can do and I'm just amazed it's it's got to be in the DNA there's just no other way to describe it or you know to explain it it's well, that's why I don't, 
don't know why they're taking music like out of places all over the place because music is educational. It teaches you time and it teaches Absolutely. you, you know, all this and that. And uh, it also teaches you it's, – it's something to do. I mean it, it, it instead of going out and causing trouble and riffraff, put it in schools, put it in community centers, put it in churches, whatever. Do what – and get kids mm-hmm. to play instruments. You know? you know, You know, music – there's actually been studies that have shown – uh, music is everything. Dude. Music covers the entire gamut. It, it makes sure. your brain fire off on all the not all at once. Uh, it's it's math. It's it's physical. It's it's creativity. It's it's a, it's a, it's another language. I mean, music mm-hmm. is another language. Right. You know, um, it's it's cardio. When you're singing or you're performing, that's cardio. That's that's physical uh, exertion. Um, it's it's memory. You have to memorize uh, things. You know, it's it's um, the circle of three. It's it's mathematics. I mean, it's, it's really everything. So mm. I don't understand if you're going to cut any programs out of school to save money, why music? I mean, that's right. ridiculous. I, I mean, tell somebody like Steve Vai who can transcribe, listen to a song and transcribe it, that he, he's not educated. Or he yeah. didn't, I mean, that, who can do that? you got to be educated to do that. And music can teach you everything. All, you know, music theory, whatever. Music is, I don't know. It, 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 to me, if without music, I think life would be pretty damn boring well, well it's true it's nature. like it, it teaches you how to practice and it teaches you how to like go over something and go over something and get it right and like uh, he was saying like he was saying about the uh, cardio just for me last night you don't know cardio until you're running up on a stage on a 92 degree day with all those lights <laughs> on you. right i mean it's they did a study on drummers you know uh a, a drummer runs the equivalent i think of like 10 miles in a 45 minute set Mm-hmm. I mean, in a, in, a, in a good hard rock band, he runs like ten miles in a good forty-five. That's absolutely nuts, man. Well, and the dudes from the dudes from the eighties must have been even more with their flips and sticks and twirls. And, yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. The drummer always gets the workout, man. I, I look up on stage at some of the shows that I've been to, and and I look up at the drummer, and the drummer's just drenched, man. He's just oh, all yeah. out. And the and the lead singer or the front man, he's out there. He hadn't sweated a stroke, man. Like, uh, I don't know about. There. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my worst experience seeing a drummer. I went to see um, Aerosmith one time, and Jackal was open up for him. And, and our seats happened to be behind the stage, and all I saw was the drummer for Jackal's ass sticking out of his chaps. The whole fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since uh, then, I, Guido's been obsessed with drummers. Yes, and, he's, been, and, he's got a thing for drummers and man. assless chaps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually done some shows with Jackal. They're uh, they're actually really nice guys, man. Oh, yeah. they are awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They but I don't want to see his ass. I don't no. See <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love them. They, I, I saw them at a small club one time, and they still did the uh, the you know the lumberjack song and and we, we chainsaw right on the freaking stage. You know, pretty cool. Yeah, first time off. I ever witnessed that in person. Uh, I, I was in the Air Force back in the late nineties, and, and I. Uh, had a part-time job at this radio station out in North Carolina. And Jackal came through, and uh, there was this uh, a venue. Um, I don't know. It probably sat about 800 people. Um, he gets on stage, gets up on, on top of his, uh, his, his stool, and starts literally writing his name in the ceiling of this place. And I'm like, how in the hell is he getting away with this? <laughs> Not to mention he's standing on a stool with a chainsaw <laughs> with a chain on his thing. Yeah, I mean, if he falls, he's done. That's an yeah. <laughs> so, so you were in the in the service? I was. Yep. Yep. Eight years. Eight years. Well, thank you very much for your service, man. Thank you. You know, I, yeah, it's, it's it's something that I uh, I felt I had a duty to do. My when I, I I actually signed up during wartime, and my dad, my mom and dad are both like, "You're you're gonna do what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you nuts? <laughs> are you nuts? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's awesome. We do thank you. I, I myself was in the army free. I was in the navy, but don't hold it against. Nice. Don't nice. hold it against me. Uh, <laughs> my yeah. old well, Steve, Steve, our guitar player, Maximus, is, is a navy vet. Oh, good oh. for him. He's a sailor. Oh. From one sailor yeah. to another. Hoorah. So, I, I did him all kinds of hell. <laughs> well, well Free Ride just didn't get the concept of semen. He thought it was something different. Oh, you know? shut oh. up. Shut <laughs> up. Shut the hell up. He has no room to talk, eating shit all day. Well, listen, I, I, you grew up in a family that was surrounded you with music, which is very, very cool. But what bands, man, what what bands were, were, were your uh, magnet to music? What, what bands did you fall behind when you were growing up? Um, I, I actually had a pretty, 
a diverse road. Uh, I started out listening to a lot of the stuff that my, my dad was, was into, obviously, because, you know, you always follow your, your parents' footsteps. Um, believe it or not, um, I, I'm old enough to have had an 8-track. Uh, I'm <laughs> Sweet. My dad actually used to listen to a lot of stuff like Marshall Tucker. Uh, my mom's favorite band was Neil Diamond. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> so, I, I which is, you know, I'm talking about, Talk about a genius songwriter. The pop songs that, that the guy did were, were amazing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Leonard, Leonard Skinner, Allman Brothers, um, Eric Clapton. I was big into that kind of stuff when I was a kid. And then I started getting into, uh, I never really got into the whole 80s metal thing like a lot of people did. I didn't really latch on to, and this, this is going to sound funny, I didn't really latch on to anything like Quiet Riot or... Um, Metallica or anything like that until I was later in life. It was mm-hmm. okay. for me. It was it was a lot of the southern rock blues stuff that that I really got into. Ah, uh, you're my friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're my when buddy. I, yeah. um, when I went into the military, um, I started getting into some of the industrial stuff. But I really kind of opened my mind listening to stuff like uh, like '90s Nails. I was a big Trent Reznor fan, uh, and then I got into a lot of the, the '90s grunge because it was '90 '91s when I signed up, and I got into a lot of the big '90s grunge stuff like. Uh, STP, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, all the Seattle stuff was, was really big influential in my when I first really started getting into songwriting. Okay. Um, so I was in a I was in a pretty big cover band out in North Carolina, and we did a lot of a lot of that stuff, and uh, we we touched into whatever was on the radio at the time. I think um, whatever became popular in the late '90s, it was Matchbox Twenty, Hooting the Blowfish, those kinds of things, and that kind of rounded out my songwriting. I think I think. Uh, uh, it was it was a little bit of the less aggressive stuff, but those guys really knew how to put songs together, and and I started getting into that, and studying songwriting and looking at it from different aspects. Uh, and, and yeah, that's that's go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say that's a diverse uh, uh, bit of music. We almost have the same musical journey, uh, except we're diverse on one thing. I latched onto the '80s and couldn't stand the grunge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, I. I I was born in 74, so we're probably close in age. So um, for me, it was the same thing. My dad and mom, you know, met because of Led Zeppelin concerts. So I was into Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Eric Clapton. And then I got into mm-hmm. the the, metal, the heavy metal scene of the 80s. But when I the 90s came for me, I, I got lost. And I actually switched to country music for a little bit because I couldn't stand the grunge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's just uh, – but it's, was... it's weird how it works. I mean, I, I was into bands such as Rory Gallagher. I was into uh, uh, some of the British bands that were out there, Small Faces, uh, 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 the Rolling Stones, of course, and and uh, uh, bands like that. And 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 then. But you're old. Well, then when I moved to the St. Louis area, when I moved to the St. Louis area, I got into the bands like Grinder Switch, bands like uh, uh, the Allman Brothers and uh, uh, Mountain. And, you know, I think music is regional no matter what. And it was even regional back then. Uh, you didn't you didn't necessarily hear mountain on the West Coast like you heard it in in Missouri. Uh, and you didn't hear uh, Hartsfield in California. You heard him yeah. in the Midwest. Well, um, that was your but not my thing, because, you know, in the 80s came MTV was there. It was done. Yeah. You heard yeah, then it was. Everywhere. Then it all went national. Then it all right. went national. So, uh, but but growing up in the '80s, like you did, uh, that gave you a big diversity of music because music sure. music went through a, a spectrum, man. In in the '80s, yeah, it, yeah, it, really, it really did. did. Well, well, it, well, I I love rock and roll. I, I do. Rock, rock and roll was like, trying to refine itself. Well, I rock think. is my favorite music, but it's not the only. Put music another I dime in the jukebox, baby. Yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> It's not the only music I listen to. I mean, I'm a huge Prince fan. I'm a huge Bee Gees fan. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. the Bee Gees are underrated. Oh, it's the Bee Gees. They disco. The Bee Gees wrote great fucking songs. I mean, they had like 12 number ones in a row or something. And they made you know, a hell of a lot of money Yeah, doing and it. people don't give them credit. <laughs> and then Neil Diamond I liked. I even was into like Billy Joel and, and John Mellencamp in the 80s. I mean, the 80s were the time of anything goes almost. Right. You know. Right. The yeah, 80s were pretty I, 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 would, I absolutely agree with you, man. I really think that you know, 70s was very, I almost think 70s was a very defined era in, in rock. AOR. It didn't really branch out. It didn't really branch out a lot. It was it was, yeah. it was a line, and it, it went a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. But when we hit the 80s, man, it just went all over the board. Oh, it was oh, a huge oh, spectrum. It, 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 went from, it went from the classic rock artists, which were like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Yes, uh, Emerson, Lake & Palmer, bands like that went into the 80s. 
But they started to fizzle out when you had the quiet riots come in and Kiss uh-huh. got big. and Yeah, but and, you know what? Those classic bands were still revered because the Grateful Dead, the Stones, and all them bands were selling out stadium. They weren't they selling music anymore. And they still kept going. And yeah, but they, and they, they were, still kept going. And that, right. that's the magic of music. Uh, you, can keep, you can keep going. Uh, uh, just an example, real quick here, man. I'm just going to mention it. The Monkees just released a new album. Oh, dude. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> I love the Monkees, man. That was my favorite TV show growing up. Oh, uh, yeah, man. See, see, these guys are great. Yeah. Yeah. So, my so, favorite song by the Monkees is a song that really never gets played. It's called Listen to the Band. Yeah. L- yeah listen I to the band. song. Yeah. Love that song. You know, great somebody song. should redo that. You, Maximus should redo that song. <laughs> I'll bring it up. Actually, I'll, I'll bring it up. Hey, you could put a metal edge on it, man. You could put something a little heavy on it. You know, you could always change these songs up. You never yeah. know, man. You might so, have a hit on your hands. You might. So tell us about Maximus. Who, 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 who's the players? Uh, I, I actually, uh, okay. I should probably preface this a little bit. I've been in another band for about seven years called Isaac James, and uh, Isaac James. Um, we we did some, you know we actually played some big national shows and playing uh, with Guns N' Roses, uh, Quiet Riot, Seven Dust, and just a ton of ton of national bands. But Isaac James took a little bit of a break a couple of years ago. So, and I wasn't done. I I wanted to I wanted to continue going. I still had a ton of music in me. So I started the band Maximus with a couple of buddies out of Iowa, and it's uh it, it's it's been a very uh, difficult project to get off the ground. But once once I found the right players, I'll, I'll just say this. The guys that are in the band with me now are not the original guys, but they're the original guys to me because mm-hmm. Maximus didn't really become Maximus until this lineup got into the band, if that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. We were, a lot of sense. We were practicing have... for a year and a half <laughs> and changing mm-hmm. members out. So we found the right lineup with, with the guys that I have in now. So that being said, uh, Brandon Orton, my bass player, who's been my right-hand man for roughly about a year, year and a half or so, uh, he came in. As a temporary guy, he was, he was only going to come in and fill in as a bass player because we had a bass player drop out during the gig. And he literally learned the entire four-hour set of originals and covers on the back of my car yeah. um, in about 20 minutes. Wow. <laughs> you know this song? Yep. You know this song? Yep. Okay. You don't know this one? All right. Let's go over this. Da, 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 da. Okay, done. Now let's go over this one. Da, da, da. I mean, the guy was like a sponge, man. And he's just – he's stuck, you know? Um, and then we uh, – we, we picked up uh, Stephen Lampley, who's who's been a buddy of mine for years. Uh, he, he kicked around some other bands, and he was a fan of Isaac James. Um, <clears throat> he um, he came out and saw some Isaac James shows and just kind of stayed in touch with me. And then one day we were talking, and I was like, hey, man, you want to come play guitar? for what, what the hell? So he just joined the band. It was not even a question, didn't have to try out or anything. And uh, he's been in the band for roughly about a year or so. And we were... We were going through some drummer issues, and, and we had a guy that was supposed to play with us, and he bailed on us to, to go play with some kids' band up in, in Iowa or something like that. So, Steve, uh, you got to love says, them guys. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I've got this guy down in Wichita that uh, I used to play music with his dad. This kid's awesome. So, Mike Peters jumps in, and I mean, he comes up in auditions, and he has the entire set down. Never even played the band before, but the guy, the kid, wanted it so bad, and he had so much heart that he came into the practice and he nailed everything. Wow. And I said, "Sold, done. You're in the band, dude." Sweet. So we were gonna we stayed at the, we stayed at the four piece for a long time. Um, we we tried an extra guitar player every once in a while, and it just it didn't work. Um, until recently, my cousin uh, Sean Sean Marquette out of St. Louis has been uh, the kid's a phenomenal guitar player. He's he's definitely got a different spin. He's very much more into the, the real industrial heavy metal uh, black metal type stuff mm-hmm. and and I'm kind of getting him into learning all this other the other genres and, and and he's really starting to pick it up and and I like it because he brings a different edge so my plan is Sean's going to be the fifth member in the band and I'm probably going to put the guitar down on a lot of stuff and let those two guys go at it oh that's cool so I'm I'm teaching him a lot of my parts he's learning backup vocal stuff Steve singing Brandon singing. Um, we've been working on harmony stuff, so it's 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 going to be a it's going to be a good project. I, I'm, you guys, I'm, I'm pretty sure about it. When I saw you here in St. Louis um, at, over at Scotty's uh, Pub, uh, you guys were pretty much together, man. I mean, you guys really floated it out there, and uh, 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 you seemed like you've been together a lot longer than you say you have. Um, well, it's chemistry. 
it's chemistry, man. And it's like I said, the band was not Maximus until the current lineup landed in place. Uh, yeah, it, and, it, and, it, and that happens good. more times. I mean, I mean, any it, it, than you can think of. I mean, there's many bands that go through multiple members until they get it right, you know. And yep. uh, it, it just because it was the first band or the, the original members doesn't mean it's the only one. You know what I mean? It, 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 even like bands like Black Sabbath for a little while carried on with a new singer. It, it, yeah. It, you know, so the right pieces fit. It's perfect. And I, you now you guys, you have any material out there for uh, purchase or? Oh yeah, yeah. We've uh, well, we've got we've got two songs that are completely done, produced, released. They're out on iTunes. Uh, we've got digital downloads that you can you can pick up from us. Uh, we're getting ready to go into the studio. I've, I've, I'm trying to work out the schedule with the producer, but uh, I think we're going to be recording. It's either going to be in Kansas City or Atlanta. I haven't haven't decided which way we're going to go yet. So I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've got to get a schedule nailed down. Depends what everybody can do. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go and try and get a, a CD done before the end of summer. Oh, that's cool. So Excellent. Excellent. We, we've got about two hours worth of original stuff. Uh, ben actually just wrote a new song last week that's a little different for me. It's in, it's in a very weird tuning. It's, uh, it's very smile empty soulish. I guess mm-hmm. is a good way to look at it. So, yeah, a, three, a little Three Days Grace, a little smile empty soul. Um, it's, it's a little what different. What tuning is that? Right. What tuning are you in? Um, let me see if I can remember it. <laughs> I found this on accident one time, screwing around. It's uh, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp, E, A sharp, C sharp. I think is what it is, or something like that. I've, there's actually a YouTube video up uh, of me playing. It's a song called uh, "Holding It In," and I'll I'll go over the tuning in the beginning. And um, that song is, uh, is is actually what I wrote for my wife uh, about five years ago when I first met her. But the tuning is, we've we've taken off and and done this faster tempo rock song with this tuning, which is a little different for me. Killer. I love uh, playing an alternate tuning. is such a weird experience. Like that first few like times you discover what you could do and like how you don't have to maybe stretch so far, or maybe you can stretch super far and give it a total different sound. Is just like relearning the guitar almost. It is. It is. You, You have to almost create chords that were that you never knew before. To find the chords, create them. Uh, I actually do a solo in it in this tuning, and you to talk about a challenge. <laughs> My brain is like, um, where, what, what, where am I supposed to go? With this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can imagine. Yeah, I, I, I have that trouble when I'm doing Guitar Hero. <laughs> oh, guitar. Nice. <laughs> which, which version do you have? I think I got the Aerosmith one. The Aerosmith one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ollie, I can't one. even fucking play that, let alone a guitar. You know, I'm like, what the hell? I, I, a lot of a lot of guitar players will tell you that they cannot play Guitar Hero. It's uh, oh, it sucks! Music. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's when definitely I play good. Guitar Hero, I play the drums. I play the I play the rock band drums because they're like, why don't you play guitar or sing? I'm like, no, no, no. I do that all the time. Let me play the drums. Let me play play the drums. <laughs> I, I used to be in this band out of St. Louis called Field of Grey about 10, 10, 11 years ago. And we, we toured all over the South, and we had this van that had a drop-down screen, so I always took my PlayStation. And we we took Guitar Hero on one of the tours with us. And my guitar player and I used to get so damn frustrated. My my guitar player would literally take the controller and throw it down. So I'm done with this thing. Just get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> the drummer would get on it and just rip through it. I'm like, dude, you suck. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> That's how it was when I used to play Chaz against Madden football, and he'd cry and throw the remote down. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Mom, he won't let me win. <laughs> Mom, he won't let me win. Yeah, yeah. but sense. you know, we have all. You know what the cool thing about right now is, uh, we have many decades of musicians and uh, music enthusiasts on right now. So, I mean, because Rock Chaz here is born in the eighties, so. <laughs> He's got oh the newer, God, you know, but so he grew young. up. Well, he's yeah, he is. And and you know, he's uh got that 90s thing of the younger music that he likes mm-hmm. more than like we would. You know what I mean? Like uh we were liking more of the mainstream stuff. You know, I think when you're younger is when you f- you find bands that are not mainstream so much. Yep. 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 You, you know, and as you get older, you kind of listen to the norm or whatever they're playing on the radio. But I I think it's kind of cool that music just keeps going, you know, and there's no reason why 
you know, when we decided at one time we were a classic rock station, we decided to go with some new music. Now, I haven't listened to new music in a long time, but as I was researching the music for the station, I'm like, what the fuck? This is really good. And I became one of those people that I always said I wouldn't be. Ah, new music sucks. I don't want to hear it. And I'm glad I dropped that now <laughs> because I'm missing so much by saying yeah. new music sucks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of new there's music a- out there that's, that's really rocking stuff. And, and, well, there, uh, there's there's so many people in this world who have like the uh, the theory that oh music died when John Lennon died and I mean it, sure that's a tragedy but it's just it's certainly not the truth. It's just a, it's just oh, another no, story. Not. It's a, just another story in rock. I mean we how many artists have we lost in the last year in the last three months alone? Yeah, um, and yeah. we've lost a lot of artists. In I, the last I will three say months. I I shed a tear and got a tear too for Prince so oh you're such a weenie no because did you I see mean, the latest report came out that, that now they think he was murdered that they're actually admitting they think he was murdered wow really I, I kind yeah. of had speculated that too and because murder. nobody knew he was sick I know he was a private person but this is fucking you know 2016 if, unless you're really secretive about it people are going to find out yeah you know? no absolutely People are going to find so, out. What, he got poisoned? Do you think somebody poisoned him? Well, you know, I, I'm one of those nutty conspiracy theorists. <laughs> and I'll wear it proudly. I don't give a damn because I've actually been right eight out of ten times in the last ten years. So whatever. Okay. I'll, I'll wear the tinfoil all week long. I don't care. Um, OJ did it. <laughs> there was a if, – if you really get into his, his, uh, his political beliefs and stuff, and I'm not trying to get political, so we're not going to go there. But okay. if you really get into his political beliefs, he spoke out against a lot of the, a lot of the the one percent, the elites of the world, and and uh, against the. He used to bring up the new world order all the time, and and he talked about uh, just a lot of the stuff that that conspiracy theorists have been screaming about, and I started noticing that there's a, there's been a trend. I mean, there's a lot of artists that have died recently that have spoke out against that stuff. So, I mean, you know, you can call it what it is. It just if the writing's on the wall, then if it walks like a duck, quack, quacks like a duck, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I, no, I hear what you're saying. It, it, there's too many people that have died in the past. I mean, this year yeah. alone, I mean, Glenn Fry, uh, you know, David Bowie, Prince. I mean, I can keep going on. These are freaking, these aren't just like, oh, that guy died. These are big fucking rock stars. These are guys that yeah. sold millions upon millions of millions of records. And people listen to whatever they say because they're iconic. But – why is 2015 end of 15 and 16 has been the worst year for music ever as far they're as they're getting people. old dude yeah. they're getting they're, old they're, yeah. they've always been getting old they've always been getting old why are they dying now? Years. well glenn yeah. fry was a young man glenn fry prince was, young. was 50 56 yeah prince was yeah. fairly young i mean yeah. but but you know it all goes back to their health and the way that they live their lives i mean lifestyle has a lot to do with how long you survive yeah. Uh, uh, again, than, again, than, Keith Richards. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Keith Richards is never well, die. yeah. Well, Keith Richards. You know, he, everybody's <laughs> got their own blood. You know, everybody's got their own soul. When it's time to go, Keith they're going to go. Richards. Even Keith Richards. Oh, Keith is Richards go has got ahead. new blood every month. He'll probably outlive <laughs> me. He does he has blood transfusions done like every month? Yeah, he's. he's I have a I have a conspiracy uh, theory question for Blackie, if I may. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Since you wear it proudly, here's my question to you. Is the real Paul McCartney dead? You know, I, I ran across that, and, and I, I try to scrutinize things as much as possible. I, I'm not just one of those guys that just follows along with whatever's popular on, on conspiracy theory sites. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a dick when it comes to that stuff. You know, I, I looked at the pictures, dude. It, I don't believe it. I, I don't buy it. Right. I, I think that Paul McCartney is Paul McCartney. Has always been Paul McCartney. I, I uh, had the it's opportunity. It's really serious, man. Yeah, I had the opportunity to see Paul McCartney. Uh, he had the ranch in Tucson, Arizona, and I, I this is no no shit, no shit. He has a ranch, and I was up in that area where his ranch was, and Linda was still alive at the time, and mm-hmm. I, I drove into this Circle K, and sure enough. There's this car parked off to the side there, and in the back seat was Paul and Linda in the back seat. And I turned around, and I looked, and I said, hey, Paul, and he waved. Okay. Oh, you're I, nice. Wow, you're that awesome. Means he's, that means he's alive. 
Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> Paul McCartney. That was Paul McCartney. Paul, I, I, Paul is Jim, alive. Jim Morrison is the one that gets me. I, I, I still, maybe he's dead now, maybe, whatever. But I don't think he died the way they said he died or he didn't die. Because, you know, the doctor's note was signed by some doctor nobody heard of, the coroner's report. And nobody ever seen the fucking body. Come on. At least stri- yeah. dig, up, dig up the fucking body and take a DNA test. Because... He's probably dead. I mean, he probably died, and they just—they're weird, and they just did it that way. But he's dead. You know, he's no, dead. Elvis is alive too. Elvis is dead. No, dead and stinking. <laughs> now was was Elvis murdered? I no, think so. El- no, think Elvis that. fucking took a shit, and he couldn't get that last turd out, and he fucking. You know, <laughs> he, he's, he like, uh, he's like he's like Big Pussy on The Sopranos. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the guys, he died. He, yeah, he died on the toilet. Holy yeah. camoly, he just blew up, man. <laughs> it, you know, oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny because my two favorite musicians ever are Elvis and Prince. You know, and, Elvis uh, and Prince, yeah. It, Elvis it, and it's Prince. a big, it, big difference. I mean, well, not so much. Elvis had a lot of not uh, really. R&B and shit, too, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, they're cool. <laughs> here's, my, here's, here's my thing on Elvis. I Okay. I always go back to money and motivation. Do you have the money, and, and do you have motive? Okay. Well, okay. Obviously, Elvis had money. Right. So, I mean, there's no question that the guy, the guy probably could have just flew to another planet, and no one would ever know. I mean, that's just how much money the guy had. Um, did he have motive? Well, there's always some speculation that he wanted to disappear because he just got tired of people. So, okay. Is it? A, does that make it a possibility? Sure, it does. I mean, you didn't have the internet back then. It would been it it would be so easy for someone to just disappear into obscurity, and come out in ways that don't necessarily reveal them. Right. It, did it? Did Elvis die when they say he did back in the seventies? Honestly, I don't think he did. I um. I like this guy. And I, and I, well, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. There was actually an album that came out in uh, in the eighties, and <clears throat> it was. Orion. There was the. There was a silhouette. It was all these guest stars. I think Jerry Lee Lewis was on there. Uh, I can't remember who all who was on it, but there was a silhouette of the iconic Elvis Presley. And it looked like him. This, this silhouette in his, in his pose, and there was a voice on there. And they they supposedly did a voice analysis, and it supposedly matched up. But this wasn't recorded until until like years after he supposedly died. And then of course uh, there was a, there was a picture that came out of this old elderly man. With a the child that looks so much like Lisa Marie's kid. Uh, if you look at Lisa Marie's kid now and look and kind of go back years mm-hmm. to when this kid would have been like four or five years old, I mean, it looks like the same damn kid. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I can't say for sure. Did he have money and motive? Sure. <clears throat> Does that make it a possibility? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, even yeah. today with the internet, anybody can go buy an island somewhere and you never yeah, see did, Well, for Richard Branson owns an island, the Virgin Records owner. He's got his own fucking island. His island is so big and it's only his that his shitter is just outside. He yeah. takes his shit in the open because he's in a tropical I island mean, all by himself. <laughs> yeah, okay, but, okay. Uh, here, here's a good way to look at it. Uh, you, you've heard of the families like the Rothschilds, Bilderbergs, who supposedly oh, own the whole sure. world. Absolutely. Have you ever seen one of them? Never. So how would the, you know that they're alive or dead? How right, do you the know Ro- they even exist? You the wouldn't. Rothschilds are the the most the richest people. It, I, you know, you, you they got so much money that they 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 outdo the top three billionaires on the list, yeah. and they, they, nobody yeah. will ever know how much money they have. I've and never seen one in my entire life. I never so seen how one do one I even know that even exists? Because they own all the banks. That's how you know. <laughs> 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 and, and and that's what they do. But <laughs> but you're right. There, there's you know conspiracy theories sometimes too are not you know people like oh you know, that's just conspiracy theory blah blah blah. But some of them are true. Like you know maybe the nine eleven whatever because things are happening. Governments do things and then uh, throw the conspiracy theories out there so that you think it's fucking not right. You know, and it could be Elvis could be alive, you know, or not died when they said he did. Maybe he is now, yeah. you know, but maybe he just the last part of his life. He just wanted to live in peace. Sure. You know? He was getting, I mean, to be why, a, why is it, why is it so hard to believe? I mean, isn't that what any one of us would want to do? Absolutely, and you know he was getting kind of chunky, you know, and he needed a break, <laughs> and you know, and I, he could have, and 
who knows? I still think he's a little, was a, didn't die when they said he did, and yeah. I don't care. But I still love him, and I think with El, people like Elvis, and I'm going to throw kudos out to even Chuck Berry, Little Richard, and Bill Haley, rock would not have progressed. They were the yep. guys that progressed the rock, you know, and uh, Chuck Berry – you know, nobody gives Chuck Berry credit, but Chuck Berry was the the, the grandfather of the, of oh, the fucking yeah. lead guitar player. Bo Diddley, all them guys oh. back then, man. Oh, all and- them, yeah, yeah, all them guys back then. I mean, uh, um, uh, you know, they all played on a dobro, or they played uh, uh, they played their electric guitar like it was going out of style. Jerry Lee Lewis on the piano, for Christ's Look, sake. James Burton from um, you know he was an Elvis, but he was all started with Ricky Nelson. James Burton. Yeah. He was- Great guitar player, great and, guitar player. You know, yeah. and they started. I, I remember. I, I don't know if I'm. This is true, but I've been told this that um, Rock Around the Clock had the very first guitar solo of all, all time in rock music. You might be right, actually. I think you might. Right. I think that's I actually true. I don't know if it was like the first guitar solo, but it was like the first like featured balls to the walls. Dare I say, shred guitar solo. It was kind of shredded too, though, man. For the time yeah. period. That was shredded, man. You know, somebody like Steve Vai in the 50s, they'd be like, who the, what the, is this the fucking devil? You know? Right. Back to the future. Well, he, right, right. I thought he was the devil. Wasn't he the devil? Oh, oh never mind. Yo, Freddy's he was the devil. That's right. Yeah. He it's was the Freddy. devil. He was the devil's uh, associate. Freddy's right. the devil. Oh. Freddy's the devil. <laughs> and it'll be a cold day in hell that Ralph Macchio beat Steve Vai in a guitar duel, by the way. <laughs> just, just hey, put, you know, hey uh, we're going to play. You know, gonna he actually play. played all those parts? Ralph, yeah, he did. He did, and then Ry Cooter filled some of the parts in for him, yeah. but he had to learn the parts to make yeah, the yeah, yeah. look right. And uh, Ry Cooter, only thing Ry Cooter did was that classical thing at the end. Yep. You know when he yep. when he beat Steve Vai. Yeah, okay. I can't even say that. Yeah, there's you know, no way. Say, <laughs> yeah, he beat Steve Vai. No problem. Yeah. Well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna play a tune. You got a few minutes to hang out with us, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right, you having a good time with us tonight? Oh, I don't know, man. You know, it's it's a kind of boring conversation. I think I'm going to go drown myself. <laughs> hey, we're going to play Give You Away, Gave You Away. This is Maximus on KGFRocks.com. You're listening to The Conjugal Visits.
What a rockin' fucking song, man. That's yeah. a great song, okay. dude. That now okay. that's you okay. on lead vocals, is that right? Yep. I okay. uh, actually did on on both that one and Boomstick. I did uh, all the guitar work in the studio, also. Oh, cool. We actually, I, I'm just let you know both the songs we play tonight are going to be part of our daily uh, playlists. Nice. So they'll be in daily rotation, and uh, they'll definitely be played at least once a day, if not more. So probably more, the way the rotation works. So. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and, I'm hoping. Uh, uh, go ahead. We, we've got a new song we're getting ready to record uh, called "A Better Way," which is it's kind of a cross between uh, Soundgarden and Led Zeppelin. Oh, cool. And uh, I'm really stoked about it. Uh, I love playing. Absolutely love playing the song out live. And uh, I'm hoping to get that one recorded next. So when we get that done, I'll get it sent over to you guys. Absolutely, we'll we'll throw it right yeah, in there and we'll put it right uh, in. So because you know what we we do a lot of uh, unsigned bands and indie bands, and you know we really uh, one day we might end up being just an indie band station because I'm finding so many good bands that we're doing and it's like, why aren't these people signed? You know, why aren't these people like playing in a stadium or not a stadium? Cause nobody plays stadiums anymore, but you know, <laughs> somewhere. And it's ridiculous. The record industry sucks. It sucks bad. It's by design, man. And you know, when you go back to conspiracy theories, all that stuff's going on in the industry is by design. They're, they're, they're killing rock music on purpose. I, I believe anyway. Uh, I'm with you um, on that. I, I'm with you on that completely. Well, they they don't want to hear from us. They they really don't well, want to hear from us. Well, if you think about it, rock music's always been about rebellion. It's always been about thinking free and doing just doing things outside the box. Mm-hmm. Well, that creates a whole list. Of, that creates a whole jo- uh, generation of free thinkers and rebellious type minds. I mean, you know, let's go back to let's go back to the fifties and sixties. Look what it did back then. Right. It, it absolutely took all the control. Out of uh, out of the, the powers that be, he took them all right out of their hands. You know, it got it got so then, bad that they crossed the colored line and danced with each other in the fifties. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, and and I'm surprised they didn't I mean, kill Rock then. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so I I truly believe that they're that they're purposely putting out this mind numbing music. I don't even call it music. It's just it's crap. It's, right. it's mind numbing electronic digital junk that it, it puts people it makes drones out of them it makes them they, they can't think for themselves they just they turn into to mindless sheep you know right. it's uh you know having spent time in the military I, I i studied a little bit about um what they do as far as like like torture goes and 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 brainwashing and stuff like that and and that's one of the things that they do that they'll actually take repetitive beats and repetitive colors and 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 images, and they just constantly just play them over and over again. Just just keep beating it into somebody's head until it turns somebody into a mindless drone. And that's exactly what that that it's not even music. It's exactly what that does to people. And I think that that's why they're pushing that so hard on every media channel and every Disney show and and every movie. It's just it's like man, enough of this crap. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it's all crap. It's like they've lost. Is it's like there's no imagination. Just, well, it's still, it's still, it's, it's like, still there. If I, it's still if, there. If I put it out there, then they'll love it, it because it's me doing it. Does that make sense to you, man? I mean, they yeah, think but no, that he's they, talking about it's different. What he's talking about is the industry's pushing what what should be played like they always have. Exactly, exactly. But, but, but here's the thing: in rock, that's true. But I don't think that's true in heavy metal. No, I don't think it's true in in, in a lot of the rock either, though. Yeah. Well, it is true in a lot of rock. If wait, you listen wait, to wait, wait. No, Explain. I, I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah because I, I don't think heavy either. metal artists still do do still are, are singing about and playing the way they want to. Right. I, I don't agree because you know I'm a big heavy metal guy, and arguably the biggest uh, you know heavy metal band in the past few years is uh, Five Finger Death Punch, and all their songs are just like the same, and it's it it just doesn't make any sense how. Like you're gonna say that the heavy metal music is still pushing out when these guys are the, like that band Five Hundred Death, Death Punch was all like handpicked from all different bands to just go uh-huh. out and be the boy band of heavy metal. This yeah. is metal. This is what you like. All you soccer moms will like this band. Yeah, and yeah. that's all you need to know. And so, in, in, rever- in going back, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these guys are just putting shit out there, saying, "Okay, they know it's me, so it's gonna sell." Okay, instead of instead of them promoting the bands like Maximus, like uh, Huge and In, like like uh, uh, Delosier and bands like that, uh, instead of doing those guys, 
they say, well, we'll just take the easy way out. We'll just put these guys out here. Everybody knows their name. They're going by name recognition, not by the talent that's in that band. And I think no, it's that- still going on. Like the '80s, the, changed the game of music a lot because in in the set, '60s and '70s, you could be an ugly motherfucker and have a hit album. But once the '80s came, you couldn't be the ugly person anymore. You had to be beautiful. And then the no. '90s grunge came, and that changed again. But I think we're back to where you have to be a good looking person and and have an image and have uh, something to sell more than just the music. Well, I, I, crap, I disagree. Which is crap. I, I, well, yeah, which is crap, okay? But the guys but that aren't is getting... That, is that music or is that society, Guido? Because if you yeah. even think about it, why don't we do the, the parallels with uh, something you and I used to like? I don't know about those guys, but why don't we do the parallels with professional wrestling? Professional wrestling in the 60s and 70s were big three, 400-pound fat guys. Yeah. yeah. You look at it yeah. now, they're just... I mean, at the worst guy in the roster has a eight pack of abs and can do a backflip off the top rope. Right, right, right. But you know, I, it's I, just yeah, society. Society has changed and society's to also become more of a of a don't offend somebody state and be nice and love and peace and what all this oh. shit. And you know what? It in in that does it a lot for the music too. I, I, I agree with you though, Blackie. It sucks. You know, it, it sucks. Music it, it, it is not what it used to be. And that's why there's so many classic rock stations out there. You know, because but those it's, classic rock stations are still playing the same 14 fucking bands. There's more than yeah, that yeah. out there, you know? I yeah. mean, it, you know, the, the question I would ask for that is, 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 is society changing or is it being is it being led? It could be led. And I, I think I like that more, that idea that we're being targeted that way because we are. You know, in years past, you didn't, you know, you know fold to, you know, now we're catering to everybody. I want to use this bathroom. Okay, go ahead. You know, I, I want to do this. Okay, go ahead. You know, because I want to listen to this. Okay, go ahead. You know, and it, it's like we're just catering everybody now. And I don't now, know. Music is showing people, like that too. Some people will say, "Well, I, I, they don't listen to a radio station." So, okay, just take for example KGF Rocks. I don't listen to a radio station because I can go to what music I want to hear and just play it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't want to hear what some other guy thinks I want to hear. And yeah, I but, think that's a p- big part of what's going on today. Well, yeah, is, yeah. It, 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 those companies ruin music and Spotify and 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 fucking uh, Pandora and stuff like that because you can do that. Yeah, you know, you pick your music. But but there is still some people out there that want to be that want to be like, oh, I haven't heard this song in a long time. And then again, there's those people that can't decide what they want to hear and they only want to hear the radio. There is those people out there. Right. You know? I tell you what, I've witnessed. I, I've been very fortunate in. Well, I started playing professional music, I guess, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I've probably played a venue or the like in about 44, 45 of the 48 lower states. So having said that, I've been all over the damn country playing music. And the thing that I've witnessed is when the local radio station gets involved in the local community and spins the local music and goes out and supports the local bands, the entire city latches on to that, and it becomes a huge thing. Like, like for example, uh, the, the band Isaac James, we played with uh, a band called Royal Bliss at an auditorium, and we'd only been playing in the city for probably less than a year. Not even, not even 12 months had we ever set foot in the city, ever, the first time. And this station latched on to us, and they're spinning every other local band in with the national bands. It's like, you know, you might hear Five Finger Death Punch, or you might hear Bad Company, and then you might hear... Uh, an Isaac James song, you know, and right. with within ten or eleven months, we sold out an auditorium of thirty five hundred people with a with a line wrapped around the building. That's awesome, you know. And, and we're not neither one of us are signed wow. bands. There was, there was four bands on the bill, nobody was signed, and I mean, it just that's the kind of support. And, and still, but years you later, get, you don't you don't get that in the bigger cities, do you? I mean, no. was that in Kansas City? Well, what city was that in? Well, no, no. This, this was in Burlington, Iowa. This is actually yeah. where my base player lives. Um, and, and I'll get back to that in just a second. Um, speaking of bigger city publicity. Right. Um, still, I can take Maximus up there, or I can still roll up into Burlington, Iowa, and, and a ton of people know who I am just because, of the, the, uh, just because of the support that I got from that radio station. And I've got a ton of friends up there, a ton of uh, music fans that came out to listen to Maximus just because of the support that the station was giving us. And 
corporate came in. I think it was Emmis came in and bought the station, and it pissed off the uh, the program yeah. director so bad he quit music altogether. Him and him and his right hand man both just walked away from music altogether. It pissed them off so wow. bad. And now, two years later, that city is dead with music. It's just absolutely yeah. nothing going they on. Kill it. A couple they, of bands. They, 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 they music they killers. And and everywhere corporate goes into any one of these cities, and they do this. They, they I, I don't know what it is that these these guys with these corporate uh, law or these corporate degrees think that they're doing. They think they, they got the, their thumb on the on the pulse. They don't know jack shit, and right. it, it seriously pisses me off. No, 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 no. The they know. That, they know exactly what they're doing, Blackie. They're going in and they're shutting down the local scene. So all they have to push is, is the, the record companies that are in exactly. their pockets. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly it. So going back to big city support, um, we spoke a little bit on the break. Uh, I used to be in a band in St. Louis called Field of Grey, and it was a uh, we. We did some pretty big stuff. I mean, we uh, we, we played with some, some big guys. Uh, like uh, I, I got to play with Carlos Cavazza from Quiet Riot, uh, Jimmy Bain from from uh, from Black Sabbath. Um, there was a few bands that we played with that were pretty large, and and I would probably give that was probably a result of what KC95 did for us. KC for a little while there, they were actually getting behind us and they were pushing us. They'd spin us during the daytimes and and. Uh, we probably got rotation on KC three or four times a day. Uh, they they actually played. They, they have a program in St. Louis called the Seventh Day, which has been going right. on for like forty something years. Yeah, it's still going. <laughs> seventh on. Day, Seventh Day is always for any listeners outside of St. Louis. Seventh, seventh Day has always been reserved for really super well known bands, and I'm talking bands like the Allman Brothers, Led Zeppelin. Uh, I've heard Nickelback on there. Um, I'm talking like mega bands that are you know huge around the world. <clears throat> they actually Radio Rich actually spun our record twice in four months on the seventh day, and I was blown away by that. Yeah, you know, that's I mean, that's, that's the kind of support that we got, and because of that, it afforded me a ton of opportunities around St. Louis, just just from being in that band. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what the size of the city; if the stations get behind the local bands and and they get involved in the local scene, dude, they could they could push corporate right back out of it. You know, yeah. they're they're so afraid to do it. And I know it has to do with money, but dude, it's not always about the quick fix. Go That's the right, long right. route. Go the long. Go way. the long route. Put put your put your roots down. Go the long route, and the Excellent. money will be there. And and not only do you have the money, but you've also got the support from your community. Excellent. Hey. That's a great segue, man. That's a great segue. What do you guys got coming up? Are you guys going to be doing any live shows in the near uh, future? Oh yeah, our uh, our our calendar's starting to stack up. Actually, you can go. Go to facebook.com slash Maximus Rock Band, and we've got a big events calendar on there. You can subscribe to it and stay stay abreast of cool. what's going on. I'm, I'm trying to get the website back up. I'm not web savvy. I'm not uh, – I don't build websites. Um, okay. I just need somebody to come in and say, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what's going to cost. Boom, here's my credit card. Go take care of it. I don't care. You yeah, know? <laughs> right, right. So, I understand. Um, we, uh, we actually – if you guys have time and want to talk about it, I've actually got a really – kind of a cool James Bond-esque story with our last website and last manager. So, okay. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Said that, I'll get back to that in just a second. But yeah, we've, we've got some shows coming up uh, June June 18th. We're in St. Louis at FUBAR. Um, a big uh, thing called Homegrown Hero Fest. And then the 25th, we're in Davis City, Iowa, which is out by Des Moines, Kansas City area. Um, there's, there's a ton of dates on there. That I, I don't remember all of them. So... Okay. I had this friend that I met at, uh, at an Isaac James show. He was managing another band. And I, I can probably tell some of this. I don't know how much I can tell of this, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> so fast forward, uh, he came on board as our manager when Maximus first started out. And he, was, he built our website for us, uh, which is why I didn't even know where to go to get the information when the website went down. Um, all of a sudden, this guy ends up disappearing, and nobody can nobody can find him. He just completely disappears off the face of the earth. And this wow. guy's a good friend of mine. Just just three days prior, we were talking about building a uh, search engine optimization uh, business because I used to I used to sell that from Missouri dot com. And um, so he's he's hitting me up for advice on going out and, and pushing this stuff. Three days prior, and all of a sudden, he's gone. Nobody in his family, nobody knows where he is. Completely disappears. Wow. So we start putting out pictures all over Facebook and, and asking, you know, where's where's Sam? Where's Sam? Um, 
about a month goes by and I get this really strange encrypted email saying that it's him and he's alive and, and he got into some, some mess with some documentary that he did with, with some some uh, uh, Muslim, like super high up the food chain uh, king's son who switched over to Christianity and, and he had to go into hiding with, with the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? So wow. I'm freaking out. I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> um. And then that was the last I ever heard from him, and I don't I don't even know if that guy's alive or not. I mean, as far as I know, he he could wow, be living under an assumed name somewhere, or right. he might be dead. For all I know. That is so wow. strange. Wow, uh, it, that's that's it, pretty yeah. awesome though. Like story, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a great story, man. Uh, he saved that one for last. <laughs> <laughs> you got a new project going? Uh, anything else you got going on? Um, I, well, I've got a little blues band that I've been trying to, uh, to to get out and do something. I've done so much traveling with work and these other two bands. It's, it's been kind of hard, but we've got about a set and a half of, of music. A uh, little little three-piece deal out here in, in Kansas. A uh, buddy of mine named Randy on drums, and we've been kind of going through a couple different bass players. But uh, blues is where I started out, really. I mean, if you really want to get okay. down to the nitty-gritty sure. of it, that's, that's where I started. Right. And I love playing it. ZZ Top's one of my absolute all-time favorite bands to cover. Um I've That's about right. got Billy Gibbons old, guitar dome, guitar yeah. down. Old ZZ Top, <laughs> so, blue, the, the yep, blue yep. ZZ Top. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Okay. And, and so, so, go ahead. Um, that's that's my third project that every once in a while we get to we get to, together, we learn everything on our own, and we get together and just get to play. And um, I, God, God bless Randy, dude. He is so patient. <laughs> he yeah. wants to get out and play so bad, and he's like, man, if you'd ever just show up to practice. <laughs> but, Poor guy. I got a job, dude. <laughs> yeah, you got to work. Got to eat. Got to eat. Well, right. listen, uh, we're gonna uh, we're out of time, but I want to let you know that man, this was a great conversation, and and mm. it got it got down into into who you are, man, and that's awesome, and that's what we try to do here at the Conjugal Visit, and I'm so glad you could join us tonight, uh, Blackie, and I will be, uh, I hopefully I will be at the Foo Bar show. And nice. we'll be able to maybe uh, meet and have a have a beer or something or shoot the shit or whatever. And uh, first I look rounds on to, me, man. First rounds <laughs> on you. All right, man. I look forward to that. And uh, we will. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up the tab on the second one. No problem. And uh, it's it's been a pleasure talking with you, man. Uh, yeah, brother. Uh, thanks for coming in tonight. And you keep rocking, dude. We'll we'll be hearing a lot more. This is uh, KGFRocks.com, and he, they are in rotation with us. And you can get their music on iTunes, and if you go to their Facebook page, yeah, like it. Okay? Thanks very much. You take it easy, bro. Anytime. Anytime, All right, Mikey. Take care, buddy. You too, brother. All right. All right. Blackie Stark, what a great interview. That was fun. See, folks? That's what it's all about, man. That that was a lot of fun. Uh, want, I want I want to thank Guido and uh, Chaz for sitting in with us tonight. He did an awesome job, guys. Thank you so much. You kept the conversation going. I don't think we had any air, dead air time tonight. That's for sure. So that's yeah, very very cool. Now I'm tired. Now you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got about we got a little over ten minutes to go on the show, and uh, uh, we, we want to talk about uh, first of all uh, coming up this week. Our good friend uh, 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 Zookeeper Zookeeper. Bob is coming back, and he's going to be doing a show tomorrow uh, for Memorial Day. It'll be a special show for you over on KGFRocks.com. It's, uh, uh, well, let's bring him in and uh, see what he has to say and tell us what the show is going to be all about, okay? Okay. Let me bring him in. He says hopefully this will work, so we're going to try to bring him in now. And this is, uh, you're listening to KGFRocks.com and the Conjugal Visits. And we're right here. <laughs> film. Yeah, come on, man, answer the phone. You, you all right? Yeah. You got it there? Yeah, I got it here. You there? You there? Yep. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Hey, you picked up. Hey, John, welcome to Conjugal Visit, man. Oh, guys, it is. You have no idea just how great it is to be back here. Oh, thank you. Well, that says a lot about us, Guido. Yeah, we're welcoming you back, and uh, glad you come back to us. Yeah, Zookeeper. Uh, uh, so I guess school is out now, and you're ready to rock and roll. And uh, tell us about your show tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we've got uh, 
It's a memorial show. You and I both know, we all know that we've lost a lot of great artists, both in 2015 and so far this year, and it doesn't seem like it ends either. And so tomorrow I would just like to spend a couple hours and reflect and just remember the music from these great artists. Now, the cool thing about this is some of these people you know right off the bat. I can give you a little hint here. Uh, Glenn Fry, David Bowie. How about this name? Michael Brown, Brian Garman, Craig Gruber. Do those names sound real familiar to you? Maybe the names don't sound familiar, but when I play the songs that they were part of, you will go, oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. So... That's that's kind of what we got going on tomorrow. Uh, we will be on from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. plus tomorrow, 11 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But I, I know this already. I have got more than enough music for a little bit more than two hours, so we're going to run a little bit long. Well, that sounds great. That's fine with us. And I'm sure the listeners won't mind that. So join uh, uh, Zookeeper Bob tomorrow afternoon for a very special Memorial Day show. And uh, unfortunately, uh, actually, I'll be at work tomorrow. So uh, maybe I'll put my, I'll, I'll take my earplugs and put them in my ears and listen to your show while I'm at work if I can get away with that. And uh, That'll work for, for you. We're, we're glad that you're back. And tell us when you're going to be on uh, on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, regular basis will be Monday and Thursday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So two hours, Monday morning, 11 until 1, Thursday morning, 11 until 1. Thursday, we're going to kind of debut something new. It's what I call 12 at 12, and we'll get into that on Thursday. 12 at 12. Okay. So you want to look forward? We're looking forward to it. Thanks a lot for coming in and sharing with us tonight. Uh, We appreciate you coming back to us, and uh, we look forward to shows with you in the future, bud. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, too. I have missed you guys the last two months. We missed you, too, man. We're glad you're back. So, you know, hang with us, man, for a little while longer, and we're going to have a great hot summer, man. You bet. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Uh, Okay, man. See ya. All right. All right. So we got Zookeeper Bob back. We got a full full Monty, man. We got a full Monty. I got a full Monty for you. Yeah. 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 Let's take yeah. it easy on that. Yeah. Yeah, let's take <laughs> well, We don't want any of that, man. I will. I, I got full Monty, floor. your ass. Oh, okay. And yeah. continuing on, Zookeeper Bob told you his days. Also, on Tuesdays, we ha- or Monday nights, we have Rob Rob Boyer's Metal Enema Show. Yep. And uh, Tuesday mornings is Diamond's Hot Lunch. Uh, Wednesdays, you got the double uh, threat of In the Morning. What the hell's his name? Uh, Wild Bill Hill. Wild Bill and, Hill. And yours truly, the king of everything that rocks, Guido. On Thursdays, we have now Zookeeper Bob again and Diamond. Yeah. And then on Fridays, we got... No, 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 we don't got Diamond on Thursdays. I'm sorry. Thursdays, we got Zookeeper and Mr. Bad Habit. Mr. Bad Habit Thursday, that's right. Fridays, forget about it, Fridays, Wild Bill and uh, Diamond's afternoon or evening program. And then, of course, we got the conjugal visits on Sunday. So we are, and I'm working on getting another person that used to be in the KGF Rocks fold... A very talented young man who also worked professionally for ESPN Radio, who I'm going to try to convince to come back to us because we miss him here. And who's that and again? That's Hooligan. Hooligan. Yeah, we Hooligan. want Hooligan we have, back. Yeah, we do and, want Hooligan uh, back. Yes, we do. And, and you know, yep. you know, he 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 bit the challenge, and it was just too much for him. He had a great station going, and we'd love to have him back, man. That would be great, and that would fill our week. I mean, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. So, uh, yeah, we'd and love to works. have him. We're talking with with, uh, with Chaz here, and we're going to figure out how we can do this. He's going to do a, like a one or two hour uh, punk rock show. Oh, hey, that might be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's tough with my work schedule, but I'll, I would love to. Yeah, so uh, it might maybe... be a roving a show where every week we'll announce it's going to be the punk show will be on Tuesday this week, or the punk show will be on Wednesday. We'll we'll, we'll figure that out and uh, and come up with it. But I do want to give. 
a shout out and I want to before we end the air uh, end off the air I want to say to the people that are listening in the Buffalo New York area uh, if you're not doing anything on um, July or June 10th I think it is right Chaz yes uh, you go, Stack Burger uh, in West Seneca is having their one year anniversary party with live music uh, I will be there actually broadcasting KGF Rocks live during the event and excellent uh, doing maybe some interview, introductions to the bands or whatever, and Chaz is going to be playing. And uh, why don't you tell more about it, what, what's going on with the Chaz real quick. Yeah, we got our one-year anniversary uh, party, which is awesome. You know, it's hard to make it in the restaurant business, so we're celebrating with uh, $4 single stacks and uh, free toppings. You know, the toppings range from $0.50 cents to $1.50, so they're free that day, so come in and stack it up. I'm playing at least one hour, if not two, acoustic music. My partner in the business, Joe, him and his band uh, are playing. And then we have a special band that is putting together. I'm not a part of it, but uh, Joe is a part of it. The tattoo guy that works store next to us, Tatman Dave, he's going to be a part of the band. Uh, a guy that works with us, Goose, he's going to be a part of the band, too, for a one-off show. So it's going to be an awesome time, and uh, I hope everybody can make it out. And it's also going to be, you know, like I said, KGF will be played in between the bands. And we all, KGF's played a lot at Stack Burger. So if you check them out, if you want a good burger, check out Stack. All right. That's all I got to say. And I worked Do I get too. a review? We both, Do I get a we review? Both, we both work there too. So you could check. You can actually physically see Guido and Chaz if you come in. Imagine that. Yeah. And KGF Rex is on, like you said, mostly all the time. The only time it's not on, 730 Eastern time because I make everybody watch Jeopardy. So, maybe everybody. <laughs> yeah, and he sounds like Rain Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, Mark. Oh, oh, okay. So bef- watch, before watch. we're off air, is somebody giving me a review because I didn't get one because of our oh review for music. Oh yes, you are going to get it. So just chill. Wait a second till I come up with this. All right. This week, <laughs> this week because it's the number one song in rock and roll. You're going to review Twenty One Pilots. Oh dear. Oh man. It's the number one rock song. So that's your... That must mean it's good. No, I, I didn't say that. But the kids of today seem to like it a lot. And uh, right. 21 Pilots is definitely more of a, a, a young teen band. Uh, but we've all had our young teen band. Uh, Free Rides, young teen band is the Beatles, you know. Um, yeah. We've all had young teen bands. So that's your review for this week. Is a band I know you probably don't even like them, but maybe you will after you listen to them. Maybe we'll see. I ain't buying it. He's probably going to give them nine thumbs down or something. I don't I'm going to listen. I'm going to be objective. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, you know, I'm going in with, uh, you know, an open ears and open heart. So we'll see. Okay. Well, we'll see how it goes. I want to thank you both for coming in tonight. Tonight's show was brought to you by who are they brought to you? Who, 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 Voodoo who? Queen Management. Queen, yeah, Voodoo Queen Management and. Magazine, magazine, uh, the, yeah. yeah, and they do all kinds of neat interviews with uh, with uh, women artists uh, throughout the rock world. And uh, uh, there you go, Chaz, hook them up. And we also yeah. want, because she uh, because uh, Yvonne hooks us up with uh, a few of our guests. We want to thank her very much, and we want to give her kudos. So you can go check out their website at Voodoo Queen Management or Voodoo Queen Magazine dot com, and go check out their magazine and check out some of the awesome fucking interviews that they do because I've, I've read a couple myself so they do a really good job with that and all of the guys that work over there we thank you very much for the support of kgfrocks.com so anyway oh well man we filled the show and yeah. I, and I want to send out a very special thank you to Blackie Starks thank you for coming in tonight Blackie we appreciate you listening and we also appreciate you uh, helping to support kgfrocks.com and the conjugal visit and, and I want to say um, for those people who lost loved ones in battle that this holiday is for them and for you and it's not just about cooking hot dogs and uh, drink a beer fly your goddamn flag and honor yep. those who have fallen for your freedom agreed Agreed. Yeah. And, and you know what? I'm going to say something real quick here. Uh, uh, those of you uh, who, who lost loved ones out there, uh, keep them in your hearts and never forget that they died for you. This is KGFrocks.com. Good night, everybody. It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on KGFrocks.com.
but I mean, that's not up to me. I don't know what they charge. That's all him or 